In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Perplexity AI, which is basically like if Google and ChatGPT had a baby. It's a combination of a large language model and several large language models, from what I understand, in with a search engine. So it is embedded into the web, but it has a variety of different features in there, and I'm going to talk to you about those. So over here on the left-hand side, you have your home, which is where we are. This is kind of the search console. This is the chat area. If you go to Discover, you can kind of go to like sort of a top and trending page where you kind of get all of the general view of what's happening in the world or what's happening across the entire sphere. So I think back in the day, a lot of people had their homepage set to like MSN and MSN would have like top stories. Some people still do. Cool. Uh, if you go to library, this actually has all of what are called your threads and your threads are just your searches, but it keeps all of those. It's kind of like with chat GPT where you have all of your uh, conversations with GPT all kind of stored away if you ever want to go back to one you can always go and do that you have these things called collections that we'll talk about later and then over here down on the bottom you have your profile you have the ability to kind of go and interact with their communities here and uh, one of the cool features I think that this really neat if you want to start a new thread you can just hit control I and it just pops open a new thread for you so going back to home, right, or even new thread, which is kind of the same thing, right? We'll just show you, if you can go here, you can ask anything, but unlike ChatGPT and unlike any of the other models that you're probably commonly familiar with, uh, for free I'm in here and I'm able to interact with all of these. So if you go here and you just say all, it'll search everything, but you can search academic papers, you can get it to write for you, uh, basically just keep it local, generate text, uh, search Reddit, search YouTube and when I say search these things I mean really dive deep into the data within I don't just mean search them just like in a simple way I mean a lot deeper right so um, this one right here Wolfram Alpha this is a computational knowledge engine I haven't really dove too deep into that but I think we will later but just to give you an example of kind of how this is sort of working I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this prompt. I'm going to ask it what sort of courses are currently trending on YouTube and on the internet in general. What's, what are people eager to learn, right? And I'm going to make sure I keep this uh, focus on all. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And then that's going to go through and give me an answer. And it's going to say, hey, uh, there's a wide variety of courses that are trending, um, you know, covering these different topics. And then it's going to go and it's going to give me little citations inside of the... Uh, the chat right here, it has also kind of like uh, in Google, it has the ability to search for images and videos, but kind of on the fly, you can literally just kind of click on them and it'll it'll pull them up. So here's um, some images and here's some videos just on the fly available here in the sidebar. Um, and now it has like some related questions. I think this is a really good thing right here. Um, but then also you can go ahead and you can trigger a follow up. You can say something like, um, what topics are providing people with the best skills uh, for upcoming changes in industry? I'm gonna say which uh, course topics. I'm gonna throw that in there. So I'm basically gonna ask it something that, you know, maybe you could ask ChatGPT, but then we're gonna ask it too, like, you know, what sort of uh, courses are really kind of leaning towards those forward, uh, like, you know, evolutions in industry that are kind of coming up on us, like AI, robotics, et cetera. Now, if you click on any of these, you'll go straight there. So if I go and I look at this one, um, specific courses such as implementing industry 4.0, if I go down here and click on that, that'll take me to this course from MIT management on uh, industry 4.0. So not even diving into what that is, but just to kind of show you, it's giving you back multiple results. It's giving you all these different options, contextualizing that, and you can tell it's just right off the bat, really, really powerful. Now to access Perplexity, I'm doing all of this completely free, but there is a pro version. There are a couple of benefits to that. One, you get unlimited access to their co-pilot feature. If you don't uh, pay for that, you don't get unlimited, uh, or I think it's like 600 uh, co-pilot, um, you know, swings every, uh, right now I only have five every four hours. You also don't get to attach images, text, or PDFs, right? So if you don't have Pro, you can't do this feature. If you do have this and you can attach files, send it up. In my mind, that's maybe a little bit of, um, 
uh, a little bit of a barrier to some of the cooler features right now, but if you have Pro, definitely a cool thing. I'm sure this is really, really valuable if you wanted to have it to analyze some sort of PDF or image or something like that, and then kind of look that up uh, through a search engine, right? So you could even upload a video and you could be like, you know, hey, what videos are similar to this on YouTube? And then it would be able to go in and find something like that. I hope this was helpful to kind of show you some of the features and kind of walk you through how this sort of works. And I'm going to be doing some more videos on this. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in those videos.